Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Reconciliation Month 1 Overview. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our first, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Our custom zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation. Get great guitars. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again, duplicating it again. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down. We want to go into the balance sheet. It's a slightly modified one, but if you don't have the modified balance sheet, you can open the standard balance sheet. Tab into the right accounting drop down comparative income statement if you don't have a comparative income statement you can open the standard income statement let's go back to the middle tab and now we're going to be thinking about our bank reconciliations we've done two months of data input and we're going to do the bank reconciliation for month one then month two noting that month one often has added kind of issues related to it and most of the times those added issues are because we probably had some bank activity that was happening before we started our accounting in zero. In other words, even if you have a basically new business, oftentimes people have already set up some of the items of their business before they kind of start up their accounting software, such as the checking account. So they might have their own business checking account that's already set up already has a balance in it already has some transactions that have happened before starting the zero software and or you might have had a whole nother accounting system prior to using zero in excel or some other software until, until you leveled up to uh, the zero here then that means that you can have to pull in these beginning balances as we did uh here when we first started the system into into zero to have the beginning balance into the system and then you're going to be entering data that happens for the current period so in our case we started our accounting system for the current year of uh, 2023 and any data we had in there from the prior accounting system for the prior year we entered in as a beginning balance in the checking account now, the problem with that, one problem that could happen with that is we might have some outstanding items that were involved when we pulled over the beginning balance from our prior accounting system. And so we'll have to deal with those when we go through the bank reconciliation. So that's a common issue for the first bank reconciliation, which shouldn't be there for following bank reconciliations. That's why we want to do two side by side to do the more difficult issue that kind of comes up sometimes with that month one bank rec and then do a month two bank rec where it should be similar to what you would expect going forward which hopefully will be much easier let's go to the first tab just to note where the bank reconciliations are now remember it, whether you turn the bank feeds on and have bank feeds on or not as we talked about in the prior presentation you still have the bank reconciliation that you need to do in, in order to bank in, in order to make the report of a bank reconciliation report so you're still reconciling to do the report of the bank reconciliation. It might be easier or more difficult depending on the type 
of flow that you have. So we're going to go to the uh, accounting drop down and let's go down to our uh, bank accounts. And within the bank accounts, we've got our list of accounts. Now we don't, we're not connected to the, the bank feeds now. We have a whole nother possibly we're going to do a course or section on uh, bank feeds and then we'll possibly do some bank reconciliations when we construct our books just basically from the bank feeds but you still have a similar process uh, whether you have the the bank feeds on or not i'm going to go into our checking account here and we want to reconcile the account reconcile the account that's where we go to do that and then note here you've got the statement balance and the balance uh, in zero and here's the difference now we're not actually uh, connected to the bank so we're gonna have to do it manually with regards to the statement balance three tabs down below we've got the reconcile tab nothing's in it yet because we haven't reconciled we've got the bank statements information nothing's in it because we aren't connected to the bank and we haven't put in the banking information yet we'll talk more about that in the future and then we've got the account transactions this is our data input side that we have put into the system not with the use of the bank feeds but with a normal accounting process and system that we would need to reconcile by tying out two items on the bank statement, the status on the right hand side showing them as unreconciled unrecon because we haven't done the bank reconciliation process at this point. Let's also open up a bank reconciliation report, zero being interesting in that you can kind of look at the bank reconciliation report before doing a bank reconciliation. So it's a bit different layout than other software that you might have seen, such as a QuickBooks Online. It's kind of nice. I'm going to go to the tab to the right, right click on it and duplicate that tab. We'll go into the accounts, uh, accounting dropdown and let's go into our reports. And I'm going to type in the report I want, which is a bank reconciliation report. Bank reconciliation. We'll pick up the new report, not the old uh, report. We want the new and hopefully improved report. We're going to change the date. So I'll hit the drop down and do a, a date range. Let's do a custom range and going from January uh, to so January 1st. And we're going to go to January 31st, January 1st to January 31st. So there we have it. And then the bank account, if I hit the drop down that we want is the checking account. Uh, that's what we're going to be working on. And then it's got this interesting thing where you can where you can manually put in the bank statement ending balance, which we would get from the bank statement. So these aren't from bank feeds. You'd still get a monthly bank statement, which is what you would typically want. If I go into this, we're at 6124185. So I'm going to go 6124185 and then update this report. Now we haven't actually done the bank reconciliation, so it's kind of interesting. We can look at the report as we basically do the reconciliation. So the bank balance uh, your bank is showing and statement balance calculated must match. If the balances don't match, you'll need to identify why and fix any errors. So obviously it's not gonna match because we haven't reconciled at this point in time. But let's just take a look at what they have down here so we can see the layout of the reconciliation. So we've got the summary. This is the balance in zero, uh, 88, 10, 25. So if I go to the balance sheet over here, let's change the date in this one to just look at it for January, hitting the drop down up top, custom date range. Let's bring it back to January, January 31st, only one date because it's as of a point in time. We have here then 88, 8, 10, 25. Now note the problem of course, is that that balance as of one point in time, January 31st, 2023 does not match what's on the bank balance as of that point in time, which could be because there's errors, meaning things that we haven't entered or have entered incorrectly or something like that. And, or it could always be off because there's gonna be timing differences, possibly things that we know about and have entered, but which zero does not know about such as outstanding checks and outstanding deposits. So that's kind of what we're tracking in the reconciliation report over here. So you see they have the balance in zero and then you've got the outstanding plus the outstanding payments less the outstanding uh, receipts. Now notice they're not all outstanding. They're outstanding as of this point in time because we haven't yet done the reconciliation process. So it's not yet calculating this subtotal right here. You would think it would be calculating 
this uh, statement balance which is calculated which would have to then match out with this balance so it's not calculating that at this point we'll take a look at it later but you would think if these were calculated as outstanding because we haven't yet clicked them off as having been cleared we'd have the 8810.25 uh, and if there were outstanding uh, outstanding payments that we knew about that the bank does not know about then this is our balance which we have already included those decreases in so we would have to add them back to get to the bank balance so i'd have to say plus that's why it says plus here the 113333.1 minus the the outstanding deposits which again would be the ones that we know about but the bank doesn't therefore they're included in our balance and not in the bank balance which is why we would say minus the outstanding deposits 202143.35 and so there we have it so that and that comes out to zero that it did calculate it so we're at zero here on our calculation that does not match of course the statement balance so we're off by the 6124185 and then if i scroll down we're going to say the balance in zero is this here's the layout of the outstanding payments now outstanding payments mean that we knew about it we wrote a check for example that didn't clear the bank they're all showing as outstanding because we haven't done the reconciliation so as we do the reconciliation we should be able to kind of check these off and uh and they'll move from here to have been been they'll move out of here to having been reconciled they won't be part of the difference less outstanding receipts same for the receipt side of things and then uh the statement balance so it's kind of interesting that we can kind of see this report as we do the data input uh into the system okay so let's go to some other kind of beginning balance issues if i go back to this first tab over here notice that this information that we put into the system is basically the data input that we're putting in during a a particular period now when we started the new company file we had some information in the bank account before we started in zero this is a common thing because uh, even if you're starting your business from scratch and starting it with the excellent zero software right from that point in time it's possible that you started you know having banking transactions before you officially moved on to accounting software so so you might have to enter the beginning balance and kind of start your accounting software from one point going forward as we did in, a, in the beginning of our practice problem uh, or you might have another accounting system and you're upgrading to zero and so you're putting your information in here and then you had to pull in that beginning balance to start the new the new system from the prior accounting system so if i look at a bank statement then what that would look like usually on a bank statement is you're going to have the beginning balance notice that this beginning balance doesn't match the beginning balance that we put in place that's one of the big issues that come up with this beginning balance issue when you do the first bank and reconciliation for your your accounts and then you've got the transactions the additions and uh the subtractions which are usually summarized down below in in a summary format so this is our mock bank statement now note that you do want to have your mock bank statement as of you know whenever they process your bank does the bank statements which is usually monthly right you would like to have the monthly statement because that has a definite cutoff allowing you to have the beginning balance which will tie out to the exact ending balance of the prior bank statement if you try to just run reports from from your online banking and look at the transactions then then you you're not going to have that that definite cutoff or it's less easy to see that definite cutoff so although you want to possibly get the transactions from uh, the bank feeds uh, or download transactions and upload them into zero you still kind of want to do the bank reconciliation with a bank statement which has those definite cutoffs so that you can you can double check your your reconciliations as of a point in time now this so the so the issue here is this 30,000 was actually put into the system prior to the start of our accounting system in zero we reflected that by putting the information uh in zero in the beginning balance over here but we only put 25,000 in here why because that was what was on the balance sheet in our prior accounting system in other words the balance sheet amount as of 12 31 
22, the end of last period, doesn't tie out to the beginning balance, which should be the same as the ending balance of 1231.22, beginning balance January 1st, 2023, it's off. Why is it off? Because possibly there's outstanding items. So that means that there were outstanding checks and deposits. So we had to pull in the amount from the prior accounting system in order to make our books balance, but it was still off because the prior system had outstanding checks and deposits that we need to account for in the current system. That's the big issue that often comes up when you do that first bank rec. Once the first bank rec is done, you no longer have that issue because the ending balance here, for example, will always tie out to the beginning balance of the next bank statement and therefore things should be quite easy going forward. So a lot of times you can kind of see this issue, like I can say, okay, there's 30,000, it's 25,000 when I put it into the system. Well, what must have happened? There's probably outstanding checks for the difference. Now, now if they were outstanding checks, checks that you wrote in December, which did not clear until January, then hopefully they clear in January, the current month that you're in, and you'll see them on the bank statement. So I'll see these checks, for example, and these are the two checks that make up that $5,000 difference. Notice, uh, so these two checks will clear, and what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna be able to find these two checks in my data input in zero. Why? Because I didn't start doing the data input in zero, adding new checks into it until, uh, until January. And these checks, although they cleared in January, were written in December, which is why they were outstanding. So, so if, if the checks clear in January, the problem will kind of fix itself and you'll be able to kind of figure it out or at least kind of move forward if, even if you don't fully understand this problem. But if these checks don't clear in January, then you're probably going to th th have this issue and you can, and, and it's going to roll forward. So that's one of the issues that we'll have to deal with. Another issue we'll have to deal with is that this 30,000 right here is the beginning balance. But over here, uh, if I look at my bank statement, there's nothing in the statement balance over here. And even if I connected to the bank feeds, it might be the case that that's the case. There's nothing in the bank balance, or it might be different than what's on the bank statement, for example, uh, because what we're pulling into zero, even if connecting to the bank, is just the activity for a time period. We're not pulling in the ending balances. So if I'm pulling in the activity on the bank statements for the month of January, then it's not pulling in the, the activity of what happened prior to January. It might try to do that if you connect to the bank feeds. We'll get into bank feeds later. It might try to pull in the beginning balance, but if it does, it'll have to do a random journal entry. So you gotta be really careful uh, with that. Uh, but in any case, you're gonna, you might have a situation where the beginning balance doesn't tie out. Now, we, what are we going to do about that? Like, how can I get the beginning balance there? You might, you, you know, you might do some research. You might be able to kind of uh, get the beginning balance in here. But I, I think it's the easiest thing to do on the first bank reconciliation is just to say, hey, look, I already got the beginning balance. I just entered it in as a transaction as of December 31st, 2022. So I can just mark it off as cleared. It's not the same number, 25,000 versus 30,000 because of those two outstanding checks. But what I'm gonna do to, to solve this problem is I'm, I'm just gonna check it off uh, instead of putting it at the beginning balance just as something that cleared during the period. And so as long as I denote that in my report and I can understand what is going on in my bank reconciliation, we'll be able to check it off and be able to move forward uh, without, without much of an issue. So those are the two big things with the beginning balances that, we'll, that we need to deal with. Now, as we start to check things off within Xero, oftentimes it's useful to actually upload the information to Xero, even if you're not manually connected to the bank feeds. So that's what we're gonna do. So, and you can, you can go to your online banking and basically download uh, the activity, even if you're not connected to the bank feeds in the format of like a CSV file. So we'll do that next time and show you that that will upload it. And that activity will just be the activity, this stuff, all the detail, which is summarized by these two lines. 
what it will not include is this item, right? Because it's only showing the activity. So we'll, we'll import that and then we'll want to make comparisons between what cleared the bank and what, uh, what is on uh, the bank statement. And hopefully everything should tie out well if it's on the bank statement and it's not on our books, it's likely that we'll have to fix our books unless the bank is wrong, which isn't usually the case. If it's on our books, but it's not on the bank statement, then uh, it might be the fact that we just have outstanding checks and deposits. Therefore, it might not necessarily be wrong. It might just be something that's a reconciling item that will go into our reconciling report as an outstanding item. So we'll see how all that is constructed in future presentations. We'll do this one at a time. We'll talk about deposits and then we'll talk about, well, we'll upload the transactions. Then we'll talk about deposits and we'll talk about uh, the withdrawals.